In today's two minute takeaway, I'm going to take a few moments to talk about the superannuation changes that are happening from the 1st of July. I'm Hilary O'Dwyer, founder of Titian Consulting, your virtual CFO. Okay, so let's recap on what's happening on the 1st of July. Current superannuation rates are 9.5% and they are going up to 10% in 10 days time. This increase is going to happen until 2025 when the superannuation rate becomes 12%. So the problem that we need to address now is going to continue for the forthcoming three or four financial years. So it's worth just thinking about and, and getting things straight. So what, what, are the, what are the problems that you may face as an employer? So number one, who's going to pay for the increase in super? Are you planning to simply add that on and pay it? Or are you expecting to reduce employees' salaries because their package has been agreed at a certain amount. So before we get into the mechanics of how we're going to deal with that, let's just take a step back and look at what was stated in employees' contracts. There's a couple of things that you need to look at when you're, when you're reviewing this and preparing yourself what's about to, for what's going to happen. Number one, does the contract stipulate with your employee a gross package? So it could be a package of, let's say for example, $110,000 inclusive of superannuation. So that would be fairly straightforward, but that would be, well, the superannuation rate is X, and it assumes that the superannuation rate is stipulated as the, the rate at the time, not necessarily the 9.5% that we've all been used to. So you would then look at that and think, well, I'm just going to reduce the employee's salary and their super goes up. Their earnings don't change at a total level. Simpl they are simply getting some in earnings deferred to the future into their super fund. So that, that could be okay. Other contracts might say $100,000 plus super at 9.5%. That's now out of date, so that'll have to be looked at. And then do you then look at contracts going, well, we want to not say the rate, but simply just look at super at the prevailing rate. So what are the optics for you if you're going to say to everyone, well, it's your, your money, I'm just simply paying to your super fund, not to you. That's absolutely fine and you need to communicate that clearly to your team. But you need to remember that in three, two or three years time, their wages, as it were, that they're getting paid into their bank account is getting eroded by the super amount. And that might not be something that they want to continue doing and they that might be a reason for them to, to leave the business. In terms of operationally, if the super rate will go up automatically in your payroll system, so that's taken care of, but if you don't change the actual earnings in their pay template, you will suffer that cost if you're not expecting to suffer the cost. So a couple of things to think about there, and it does involve going back and looking at the contracts and also thinking about future contracts that you issue to employees. How do you want to word the, the package? Is it going to be gross or exclusive or super? The last thing I will mention really briefly is deadlines for paying your super. If you want to get your superannuation break in this tax year, you need to pay it next week. Next week starts Monday the 21st of June 2021. So you need to pay that to make sure that it clears the soup into, into the super fund to ensure that you get the tax break you're looking for if you're profitable. Otherwise, you wait till the 28th of July and make sure that it's paid by that date. I hope there's something of use there. See you next time.